Price Foundation is, it's here. The Weston A. Price Foundation is a national nonprofit that's dedicated to restoring nutrient dense foods to the human diet. And they do that through education and activism. So they're the people defending small organic farmers in Washington. And all of the nutritional advice that um, we talk about in the Weston A. Price Foundation is um, based on the work that was done by Dr. Weston Price. And he was a dentist in the 1930s who, um, he had a question, and his question was, what is a healthy diet? He didn't know. And so what he did was he traveled the world and studied healthy traditional cultures, and he studied what they ate. And I like to call him the Isaac Newton of nutrition because he came up with laws of nutrition. You eat these things and you're gonna be healthy. And he came up with 11 principles of a healthy diet that he learned from these healthy traditional cultures. And one of the principles was that they all made utilize the bones of animals. Um, they would grind them into paste, but most of the cultures actually boiled them in water and made broths, especially the cultures that did not eat dairy. Um, and we know now that broth is a wonderful source of calcium and other minerals. Um, just like dairy is a wonderful source of calcium. So especially the Asian cultures, the ones that did not eat uh, dairy, ate a lot of broth. So it wasn't just uh, the cultures that Dr. Price studied that were uh, drinking broth. Uh, broth has been around for a very, very, very long time. In fact, archaeologic evidence shows that people were drinking broth before they even had soup pots to boil it in. They were um, using hot stones and the stomach of animals, actually, to make the broth in. And then, or they would use turtle shells. They used bamboo um, cones, and they would seal it with clay. The first soup pot dates back to 22,000 years ago in China. So it's not something that um, is recent, it's something that's been worldwide since basically the dawn of time, and it really has a mystical quality to it, doesn't it? Uh, our mothers tell us, drink your soup when you're sick, <laughs> it'll make you feel better. Uh, there's a lot of people have said that, one of my favorite quotes on here is Aristophanes, in one of his plays, asked Hercules, have you ever felt the need for soup? And Hercules said 10,000 times so far. <laughs> in Jewish culture, chicken um, matzo ball soup made with chicken broth is known as Jewish penicillin because it works so well when they're sick. Brillat Saverin, I'm probably not saying his name right, but he was one of the fathers of gastronomy and he was the guy who said, tell me what you eat and I'll tell you what you are. Uh, said that soup is a nourishing food good for all humanity. The Native Americans prefer drinking broth to water, actually. Um, and of course, my favorite, every mother says at her table, drink your soup, all around the world for centuries. <laughs> so um, soup has a almost mystical healing quality to it, but of course, us humans like to improve upon things. And so when I often say to my patients, you should really incorporate bone broth as a staple part of your diet, they say, what, what's a bone broth? You mean like stock? You mean like broth? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. And they're like, okay, well, I'll buy some at the store. They almost forget that they can actually make broth. We forget that we can make this stuff. And um, of course, we've tried to improve upon nature and we've added all types of stuff that makes it take less time to make and have more flavor and all that stuff, MSG being one of them. But um, I have a list here of all the things that you want to look for in store-bought broth that you want to be aware of. <clears throat> um, hydrolyzed protein, yeast extract, and then there's a bunch of things that um, you might not think include MSG, but actually do. So m any malt extract, malt flavoring, even if it says natural flavoring, it can, it can be MSG. So we really have to be careful of that. MSG um, was invented about 100 years ago in 1908 in Japan, and it was a, uh, a Japanese scientist that was looking for an easy way to get that umami flavor that kind of savory, salty flavor when you add it to food. And bouillon cubes, traditional bouillon cubes, are very uh, difficult to make. They require a lot of bones. They're actually expensive to make because you have to boil it down so far. And he, what he did was he took the salt out of glutamine. 
And he discovered that when he did that, he could flavor foods really, really easily. And of course, if, if it's good for a little bit, it's good for a lot, right? And so then over the next 100 years, it started getting in everything. Well, all the scientific studies about MSG point in the same direction, that it's really a neurotoxin. And it can cause anything from headaches, little temporary headaches, to permanent. Uh, brain damage. Scientists found that mice became blind when the MSG was put into their feeding tubes. Um, in 69, uh, we found that it, MSG induced lesions on the hypothalamus of the brain. That's part of your brain that controls your hormonal system. And it's been linked uh, to autism, ADHD, obesity, and all of, all of those things. So we really want to steer clear of MSG. And what we're going to talk about tonight is how easy it is to actually make your own broth and how nourishing and wonderful it is. So um, you won't have to buy that stuff that has MSG. Actually, I was reading a lot of the information we got tonight is from Sally Fallon's new book, Nourishing Broths. And she was mentioning in the book that Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup started out as this wonderful soup in the early 1900s and then um, the company went public and they started taking ingredients <laughs> out of the soup and adding in fake ingredients and the last president I think in like 2011 was talking about how he could take more of the chicken out of chicken noodle soup <laughs> so they're trying to get it out of there so we want to stay away from that stuff and it's really easy and delicious to make your own and for many years, there's folklore behind broth. Um, but now we know why broth is so nourishing and good for us. So we're going to talk about the science behind um, nourishing broth. And then Debbie is going to um, tell all you guys how to make it. And then we have some for you to sample as well. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about broth, one of the things that makes broth so nutritious is the gelatin in broth. And gelatin is basically cooked collagen. Do you guys know what collagen is? Collagen is the stuff that's in our joints. And so when we cook a bunch of joints in our broth, we get a lot of this. Um, we're going to use collagen and gelatin kind of interchangeably because they're both in broth. Um, Gelatin, or collagen, I'm sorry, makes up about 25% of the proteins in our body. And it's literally the glue that holds our body together. Collagen makes up our connective tissue. Um, and so when we consume collagen, we are consuming the building blocks in our body. We're kind of rebuilding our body. <clears throat> and that leads me to the first thing that broth does, and it helps to slow the aging process, which we all want, right? We all buy lots of expensive creams and all that stuff to slow the aging process, when really we got to get back to what our ancestors were doing. Um, in this picture here, the collagen is underneath the skin, and the happy ones are nice and plump, full of collagen. In the skin that looks nice and wrinkled, the collagen is kind of shriveling up. So it helps our skin, keeps its youth, suppleness and firmness. Um, this is a picture that Dr. Price took, actually, in the Pacific Islands. Um, that was a culture that ate lots and lots of seafood, and they ate seafood broths. And that woman is 90 years old in that picture. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't she look beautiful? That's what healthy traditional diets do for us. Um, the next reason we should, we should drink bone broths is because uh, it builds bone. It's one of the best things we can do to have strong bones. And osteoporosis is something that I know that a lot of people are nervous about, they're scared about. A lot of my patients have osteoporosis. And the good news is we can build back some of our bone, but we have to um, have a, a balanced amount of what we're ingesting to do that. Now, minerals are really important in bone strength, okay? We always think about calcium when we think about the bones. But collagen is also really important, and it's because inside of our bones, it looks like a big lattice structure, okay? And what collagen does is collagen is the lattice that the calcium deposits on. Okay, we could have really, really thick bones with lots and lots of calcium in them, but our bones would be brittle if it weren't for the collagen. It would be like unreinforced concrete. It would crack really easily. When there's lots of collagen in our bones, our bones are nice and supple and strong. <clears throat> So collagen, and I'm going to talk about a study in just a minute, enhances um, calcitonin in the body, which is a hormone secreted by the thyroid that puts calcium in the bones, calcitonin in. Um, and of course, broth is an excellent source of minerals. And when they actually study broth, they're like, oh, it's, they, there's not that much calcium in it. But we always have to think about availability, bioavailability, when we eat the foods that we eat. 
are we going to actually be able to absorb the minerals in this food? And I can tell you that the calcium that people buy at the drugstore, they're not absorbing that. They have to go through lots and lots of reactions in their body to even get it into a form of calcium that they can absorb and use it. Um, the calcium in broth is extremely absorbable and very easy to digest and absorb. <clears throat> A study done by the Institute of Rheumatism Research in Prague uh, studied 120 osteoporotic women over three years. They gave half of them calcium and they gave the other half collagen. Um, the bone loss and bone fractures were significantly reduced in the collagen group than in the calcium group. Isn't that interesting? And we never even think about that. A follow-up study in 1996 showed that collagen enhanced the beneficial effects of calcitonin. So collagen is laying down the lattice for calcium to get deposited in the bones, but it's also enhancing the effects of calcitonin. It's pulling calcium into the bones as well. <clears throat> you guys may have heard of Boniva. That's a drug that a lot of women take. Uh, to f that have osteoporosis. What we know now about Boniva that's been on the market for, I don't know, 10 years, maybe more, is that these women get brittle bones. They're not thinking about the collagen in the bones, and the, they actually get more bone fractures. The density looks better, but their bones are really brittle. So an osteoporosis solution, if you're worried about osteoporosis, is doing lots of gelatin-rich bone broths. And if you can't get your broth to gel, we have, we have gels in here. We'll show you how to do that. Um, but it's not just minerals and collagen that we need to absorb um, uh, calcium into the bones. We also need cod liver oil, which helps in absorption. And then, um, with that, because that's full of vitamin D. And then we also need a vitamin called K2. Dr. Price called it X factor. That directs the calcium to our skeleton. Okay, and it's, it's present in high vitamin butter oil. Okay, so instead of taking all that synthetic vitamin D and all that ground up rock that they call calcium, this is a much better solution if you're worried about osteoporosis. What's um, vitamin butter oil? High vitamin butter oil? Yeah, really? um, that was a food that, um, well, Dr. Price found K2. He was the first uh, researcher to ever find K2. He called it X factor. Mm -hmm. And um, when he studied traditional cultures, every culture had a sacred food. And some of the cultures, sacred food was butter. It was a food that they ate, um, that they knew gave them healthy babies, that they knew made them feel good. And um, Dr. Price found it in butter. And so what they've done is that they've um, brought it down right to the oil. So they've taken out all the solids. And it takes a lot of milk to make this high vitamin butter oil. So it's extremely dense in nutrition. We have it here. Is it like ghee? Uh, it's even it's even more c condensed than ghee. Yeah, but ghee's great too. It's it's yeah clarified butter, um, but it's even more condensed than ghee. But if if you can't afford it, or it kind of tastes funny. Uh, you could do ghee as well. Collagen is extremely important in our joint health. And I like to call bone broth the poor man's uh, joint supplements because it has everything in it already that we, we buy in these expensive joint supplements. So our bones need a cushion in between them. And often patients will come into my office and they've lost all the cushion in their bones. And they say, why did I lose this cushion? Okay. And it's hard for me to tell them, well, it's probably been your whole life that you've been depleted and probably not moving and doing all of these things to lose that. But cartilage, and is the ma collagen is the main component in cartilage, and that's what supports our joint. <clears throat> so it strengthens the tendons and ligaments that support the joint, and it also helps our joints become well lubed. Okay? Um, it reduces joint pain and inflammation as well. So broth has all of the important things that we hear about all the time. They're in all these expensive joint supplements. Hydroxyproline is needed to make the cartilage that lines our joints. Proteoglycans that are in broth are needed in our synovial fluid. That's the fluid that's inside our joints. <clears throat> Hyaluronic acid lubricates the joints. Chondroitin sulfate inhibits enzymes that break down our joints. So we want to prevent that aging process, not just in our skin and our hair, but also our joints. And glucosamine repairs the cartilage. 
in the joints. And, and a lot of these are amino acids that are present in the gelatin itself. Now, a lot of people, and I think that this is a reflection on our society, think that once they have something, they just have to control the symptoms of that thing. Once you have arthritis, you have arthritis. Oh, my pain's because of my arthritis. What we know now is that our body can heal itself. And when we eat foods that are very, very nourishing, our body um, will heal itself. And the really amazing thing about bone broth is that the collagen in bone broth actually stimulates the repair of collagen and helps us grow new collagen. And so it doesn't just um, lubricate the joint, it also brings down the pain and the inflammation in these damaged joints. So for anyone that has osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, this would be one of the best things that you could do for your joint pain. A Harvard study of patients with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory type of arthritis, so they get swollen, really tender joints. Um, they supplemented patients for 12 weeks with collagen. Um, eight of the 12 patients responded to treatment experiencing significant reduction in their swelling and tenderness in their joints, just with collagen. It's pretty amazing. This is a disease that the medical doctors don't do anything for. <laughs> they might have put them on a drug, and these are children that they get this disease. Now, this is the really big thing that um, a lot of people are really interested in broth for, and it's the effect that it has on our gut. Broth is one of the best things, the most healing um, agents that we could possibly eat for our gut. And lots of people have leaky gut. We hear that about that a lot, right? That's when people eat food and they feel bad, okay? Our gut has really tight walls that separate the, what's inside of our gut to the out, inside of our body. I had a professor that said, um, the, your, the inside of your gut is not yours. Whatever is in your gut is like the outside of your body. You have to absorb the foods that are in your gut. Um, when we eat lots of damaging foods that wear down the lining of our gut, what happens is instead of these tight junctions that prevent large particles from getting through and only very small broken down particles, we get bigger junctions. Okay, And now bigger particles get through into our bloodstream. When big particles get through in our bloodstream, we wake up our big bad immune system. Okay, And so leaky gut is a precursor for a lot of autoimmune diseases when the body starts attacking itself. And so we see this in um, Crohn's is an autoimmune disease. Um, lupus is a big one that a lot of patients come in with. But we also see this in chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and all of those things. Now, it's also big in a lot of um, <clears throat> psychological disorders as well, leaky gut. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. So how does broth heal the gut? Broth has amino acids in it that are very, very important in gut health. The first one is glutamine. Glutamine is essential for cell proliferation and what it does is, is it helps to heal and grow the microvilli that are in our small intestine. Do you guys know what microvilli are? Microvilli are like little fingers in your small intestine and they stick out and they grab onto nutrients and minerals and they absorb them. Okay, so that's how we absorb the nutrients from our food, the microvilli in our intestine. When we have gut inflammation, those um, wear down and break down. And glutamine helps to actually regrow those microvilli that have been damaged. So people who have major digestive issues, they can actually heal their gut from that. Glucosamine repairs the defensive barrier on the mucosa. That lining we were talking about, it should have a barrier on top of it so big stuff can't get through. Glucosamine puts, helps to repair the layer there so the big particles can't get through and inflame our gut walls. <clears throat> and glycine is involved in so much stuff I couldn't even list it off. It's involved in synthesis of blood cells, synthesis of bile salts. Bile salts are what help us digest fat. Synthesis of glutathione, which is uh, something that helps us detoxify, and it reduces inflammation. Broth is also very easily digestible. And so broth is what we call a hydrophilic colloid. It attracts water to it, including gastric juices, things that help us digest our food. 
Um, raw foods are also hydrophilic. That's one of the reasons that fruit is really easy to digest. It's hydrophilic. But cooked foods are hydrophobic, meaning that they repel water and gastric juices from them. Now what this means is if we drink broth with a meal of cooked food, it's going to help us actually digest the cooked food because it's going to pull the gastric juices into our intestine and help us digest the food. So soups with lots of cooked vegetables in them are incredibly nutritious because our digestion is working properly and we're able to absorb the nutrients and minerals from the vegetables in the soup. Lots of people have heard about the GAPS diet. I chose to put it in because I have so many patients that ask about it. What can I do if my digestion is absolutely destroyed? Um, this is called gut and psychology, and it's a natural treatment for, uh, especially for children, but ADD, ADHD, autism, <clears throat> celiac disease. These are people who have a lot of damage and malabsorption issues. Uh, depression, dyslexia, dyspraxia, schizophrenia, and more. And basically what the GAPS diet does is starts off with just broth and it helps to heal and reseal these people's guts and once they do that these people start healing because all of a sudden they can absorb the nutrients and minerals from their food and their gut is resealed those large particles aren't getting into their bloodstream and they start feeling better and I've actually seen really amazing things happen with this in my practice with people who can't eat anything without feeling horrible and they do this and they start feeling better so broth is just so healing to our guts. Magic broth fills a deep need in my body and feels like a magic elixir. It really does. <laughs> I drink broth every day. I've been making my own broth for the past two months and I drink when I get home from work and it really does feel like that but broth is incredibly healing and really should be a food that we give to people when they're sick. Um, because it has all of these characteristics, all of these effects in the body. Uh, it has a whole body anti-inflammatory effect. So it brings down the inflammation in our whole body in, in part because of some of those amino acids we just talked about. It mitigates infection. That's why uh, the Jewish culture calls it Jewish penicillin. It mitigates infection. It's easily digested and the nutrients are easily assimilated in the body. We don't have to use a whole lot of energy to digest this. And when, we don't ha when we're using our energy because we're sick and fighting off infection, we need something that nourishes us that we don't need energy to digest. And finally, it has a calming effect that promotes restful sleep. These are all things we need when we're sick, right? So instead of drinking the Campbell's chicken noodle soup, maybe we'll do this one when we're sick. I, I love this quote. This is Florence Nightingale. That that said this in her book Notes on Nursing in 1859. She said, remember that sick cookery should do half the work of your patient's weak digestion. And that's so true. When we're sick, we need a very, very easily assimilated food to eat so we don't have to expend energy to digest it. All right, well, thank you guys for coming. If you have any more questions, um, We'll be here after. Debbie has an email for the store that you can email her with questions. But I think you're going to find that these handouts really help you get started. And um, if you have a health problem that concerns you that you just need more help with, we'd love to sit down with you and do a free consultation. Mm -hmm.